Okay, everyone, uh, we're back already. Uh, so I've been your host for the last few hours. I must be Tuesday Music. And uh, taking over from me right now is Freya Spirit. Uh, here, uh, yeah, here is Freya Spirit. Hello, we are Freya Spirit, and we will be your host for the next few hours, bring you the, helping to bring you these wonderful runs with amazing donations by wonderful people, all benefiting the Trevor Project. Undefined Behavior is being put on by Edge Case Collective, a streaming group made of, of, of creative queers who play, build, and break games in interesting ways. Follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash edgecasecollective for more, general, for more great content. And now we have Pat CDR bringing us Super Mario World hat. Super Mario World. Hello. And we, have, and we have an ongoing bid war that you can still donate to. And you can change the sprite mid-run. Right now, Mbalo the Cat is winning with $111, and Dr. Yoshi is second in second place with $100. So, Pat, take it away. Hi. Right. Hello, this is Chat Hacks Super Mario World. This is an opportunity for you guys to mess with my Super Nintendo via the uh, SD to SNES and USB through uh, Twitch chat. And as you can see, we're on a, super, on a standard SD to SNES. And now, I'm going to press a button. A button on the controller, of course. No one likes those buttons anymore. Uh, I'm going to load up the game, and the bot's going to come up really soon, hopefully. There we go. Now, what you can do is if you look at that link, you can uh, use a bunch of different kinds of commands to modify the game and how it's doing things. Um, this is a fairly generic version of Mario World. The only change that I made in Lunar Magic was that yay at the end of this text box. Um, and... Yeah, just the commands are things like exclamation point W and exclamation point WL. Uh, you can see the RAM map on SMW Central. And meanwhile, people are already using uh, something I added recently called Project Carl to load interesting assembly modules at runtime. So right now we got Fly Me to the Stars, and I forgot to turn on the character. One sec. We talked about the donation incentive, and I didn't even turn it on. There we go. We're Malo now. Um, it's important to uh, bring out Malo, the yellow cat. Well, orangey cat of glitch cats. And oh god, things are already following me. An adorable looking sprite. It was great while we could see it. Uh, the sprite was made by Fedora Friday. The cat was owned by Glitch Cat. The sprites are disappearing and I don't know why. That's a pretty common theme of I don't know why this is happening. Because uh, y'all are in control here. You can do pretty much anything you want. There's a few addresses that I've uh, moved access for. And of course, the goal tape is not here. And I can't die. And well, I could just go to I can just go to Morton's Castle, I guess. That's always an option. Um, if you look up there in the upper left-hand corner, it currently says L R Mort. Oh, and the world is a toroid. Okay. Um. Hmm. Level ended. That's sort of how this goes. So anyway, the uh, the way this works. As I've said, is you just can write uh, to addresses. You can load modules. You can look on the website for more information and on SMW's big RAM map for more information. Uh, SMW Agent 09 also has a really nice website that I forgot to link to um, that actually categorizes some of the stuff on there a little bit better than I have. Um, and the other thing is our donation incentive is dynamically done. So the moment that Mawa the Cat is uh, overtaken by, say, Dr. Yoshi or uh, Sonic or Marissa from... Well, the sprite will change immediately. So you'll get to see that happen without any intervention. Not having to intervene to do things is a big theme with my stream because I don't want to have to remember to do things. Um, mostly we're just going to play and see where this goes. If you have any questions, once I have chat open, I can, I can answer them, hopefully. Other people. There's a lot of other people very knowledgeable in chat who can answer good questions. God, what... All right, so the combination of things that are going on here, I'm stuck. Nice try. I recognize that one, at least. Everything is kind of behaving as a disco shell, sort of, I think. And I think they're all ghosts, but it's hard to say. So if your cat wrote something. Yeah, I like it. Cats are always messing with stuff. Need paw sense. Premier anti-cat uh, defense for keyboards. Oh, that's not Yoshi. Now we got Leap going, and the sprites keep disappearing. I wonder why that's happening. 
Leap is a uh, ASM that uh, Fistbit really loves, that allows you to jump up into the uh, sort of dash attack thing going on. This is really hard when you can't see the sprites. Nice thing about it... Oh, am I dead? I think I'm dead. Eh. Uh, if you want to load a module, you need to use exclamation point load, not just the name of the command. Oh, man. Message box got me good. I'm expecting the message box. This looks absolutely amazing. And we have to ask, does this work for other games as well? Uh, yeah. Any Super Nintendo game? It works for almost any Super Nintendo game presently. The only games it doesn't work with are uh, games that use enhancement chips. Um, namely, like the SA1, the co-processor that's used in the uh, game Mario RPG, or the Super FX chips that are used in Star Fox and Yoshi's Island. But everything else is fair game, and I've been working on uh, the other two. Pocket time. That is amazing. We cannot wait to try this. Um, yeah, no, it's really cool. Uh, this is actually just stuff I've written, so it's not really released anywhere. Um, it's a lot of random code that I've kind of cobbled together to make it work. Um, it's about 5,000 and change lines of Python between all of the various modules. Um, some HTML, so if, for instance, the thing over to the right, which is tracking the writes that people do, so you can kind of see what effects that, you, uh, that other people are doing that you might like, like turning Malo into text. Or just killing me. I guess I was small. There's an awful lot of, like, puzzle-solving aspect to this, trying to figure out what's actually going on. Oh, is this odd water? Apparently my- oh, boo sprites. I'm holding a sprite, it turned into a fish, I died. See? Puzzle solving. I need to never let go of my spring, or turn around. I need to never turn around now. It's not gonna be easy on this level. Um, yeah, this is actually a lot of fun. Um, an awful lot of people have gotten to learn... I have a warp on too, I didn't realize that. Um, ASM from this, because you can go and write ASM modules on the uh, the Project Coral website. I've had that disabled for the time being to... Oh boy. Uh, just trusted users, because writing ASM can, can kind of go awry sometimes, as you might be seeing. I think the problem is I'm respawning a trampoline every time I press B. SMW does not like spawning trampolines. Okay, there, there, there we go. Gotta say, that's a new one. So people can write any arbitrary address, and you know, that could have any effect. Oh, well, it can have an awful lot of effects. There's not, you can't write to all of them. So I'm only allowing people to write to what's known as work RAM, which is the major uh, memory that uh, non-enhancement chip games use to do pretty much all of their work, i.e. why it's called work RAM. Um, it's the region from 7E to uh, 80,000, 80,000, 800,000. Um, Anyway, it's about uh, banks worth of memory that's used for all sorts of things, uh, especially the lower half, which is known as page zero, is often used for... Um... All right. Um, maybe I beat the level. Oh, no, I didn't beat the level. The lights are just turning off. That's one thing I was really worried about forgetting before uh, starting is to turn off all the lights so I can actually see when things get too dark. Um... There are other regions of memory I'm just not letting people have access to. For instance, the hardware registers, things that uh, set the sound. Um, there it is. Uh, and of course, save RAM, because I do want to be able to save my game sometimes. Everything else in work RAM is fair game. I've considered allowing patches to the game. Uh, I haven't quite decided how I want that to look, because hijacks can be kind of dangerous, especially when loading them dynamically like I am with these modules. None of them are baked into the game. They're all loaded uh, off of the website as they're written. Oftentimes, people go through a few different revisions of each uh, module uh, as it's going on. Except for some ones that never seem to go out of fashion, like boost sprites. Like, uh, wait, no, those are puffer fish. That's why things are weird. Those are puffer fish. Think. Being able to identify sprites by their, uh, their tells, especially their garbage uh, sprite tells, becomes very important <laughs> very quickly. Oh. Goes fast. And that happens. In case you didn't know, this is a, a fairly old trick. If you turn, if you spawn a message box on a uh, level that has layer three water, which that was, uh, the water goes away. 
because the message box uses layer three. This was a trick that people often first learned in the Kaizo hack, uh, well, Super Kaizo world, the first one. So there's a message box you hit, uh, and it basically makes fun of you saying, haha, you shouldn't have despawned those dolphins, and then the dolphin's gonna fall off the screen. Exclusive offerings, nice. We have plenty of awful things available to us. Uh, we haven't even scratched the surface of the, the available things here. No one's actually changed any palettes. Yet. Um, that's a pretty common one. Nice that we've gotten to see Malo for at least a few minutes. Oh, goodness. I'm still stuck with this thing. Yeah, that's also one that's really fun, being able to set. Someone else set scroll? Is that what just happened? Not so much for that one. Mushroom. And did the game crash? Oh man, the game had to crash at the end of the cat, at the beginning of the castle, didn't it? Is now a good time to plug the sprite war? Go for it. So there's an ongoing sprite bid war. As soon as it, it, this will be going for the entire run, and the sprite can change based on your donations. Right now, Mallow the Cat has $111, and only $11 behind is Dr. Yoshi. So if you want to put your so if you want to put money in towards Dr. Yoshi, you can get the sprite changed instantly, and that will be open for the entire game. Yeah. I realize there's a hole in my logic, so it's not going to be perfect. Oh, now I'm eggs. Um, I can be perfectly automated, unfortunately, but it'll be very close. Uh, Oh, so now we've got... Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not touching that mushroom. Mushrooms are the most dangerous thing in this game. When you're in a weird power-up state, which I'm pretty sure I am. So when you're in a weird power-up state, the game actually crashes if you touch a mushroom. Okay. All right, I'm on the uh, the Chuck Yoshi. I hit the message box that moved for some reason. The floor is kind of sticky, I think. Make a lot of guesses here. I'm sure I'm a big fan of the sprite just outright disappearing thing. That's a really new one. It's very hard to play the game. They're underwater and being shot out of a cannon. Oh. Right, here we go. Or not. Dead? No. I just got hit. There's water current. You gotta feel it because of the scrolling. A lot of la oh, there's Chuck spawning on my head. That's the problem. There we go. Solve that problem. I can't see them, but they're there. That's not gonna solve the problem. With current, this might actually be really tricky. Especially since there seems to also be a lot of lag. I think I'm just gonna die right here. Nope, the screen's just gonna become very red. It's like dying, but not really the same thing. I struggle against the current and can't even read the uh, the value that tells me when it's going to drop on my head. I think it might be a 2. No, it's an F now. Uh, I think I heard Resnor. It might be Resnor mode now. There we go. I can see my sprite for a second. That's pretty cool. To sum it up, apparently we're going to Morton's Castle as Marissa. And Marissa overtook. This is also a really funny color because of the uh, palette issues. sure I like the sprites disappearing. If someone could unload that one, please. That's getting really old really fast. Especially now that I need to find a door. Why do these guys make doors the hardest thing to deal with in this game? Nope, cannot find the door. It's like you're doing a blindfolded run. It's like I'm doing a blindfolded run, except I swear that I'm getting close to the door, but maybe there's an ASM that's making me get further away. Oh, there it is. Well, now I can't see anything. Oh, there we go. I see a fence. And every sprite is becoming Blargs. Because of course it should. There we go. It's pretty often that uh, the character stuff gets garbled a little bit. Um, Mario is not built to have every single enemy sprite loaded at once. Yeah, I got crushed. Um, and so they often pick and choose which ones you want to have in a given level. You need to be a little careful about that when designing levels. Pick the uh, right kind of sprites to have in the right kind of levels. 
Oh god. Alright, that's what happens with spin jumping. And sprites now go the opposite direction, I think. Whenever I jump? No. I can't spin jump, and the level is slowly tearing itself apart. Okay. And magic hoopas. You can never anticipate when a magic hoop is going to happen. Hey, at least that worked out my... Oh. No, that did not work out my favorite. I have zero lives, I think, so I might be dead dead. Happens in Morton's Castle. Oh, I continue on. I've got, uh, what? Oh. Nintendo Presents. Lives. And the save game's gone. Oh, one sec, I can fix this. One of those things I set up a long time ago is an SRAM backup system because this used to happen a lot. Okay. I'm a brilliant man sometimes. There we go. That one? One of these is going to be the right one. Or try. Otherwise, we'll just start over again. The SRAM system does not want to work. That's the really old one. It's also the really old one. Apparently, I don't have any valid SRAMs. Figure, huh? Oh, there we go. That's the right one. What I'm going to... I need to get a race between here and there. Totally there. Load my SRAM. All right, fine, I won't load my SRAM. Probably for the best I didn't load my SRAM. No, I did load my SRAM, but I... Yeah, it's just a normal map. There we go. All right, we have an A and Mar... Oh, right, gotta restart that. My bad. Okay, it's time. Okay. There is random lag. Everyone loves good random lag. The thing, I, of course, is that I'm pretty sure the random lag is not actually uh, happening due to too much processing. I'm pretty sure it's due to loading a module that pauses the game periodically. Anyway, the way the lives in this game work is there's actually a uh, number that gets subtracted from and added to as you get lives. So when you get lives, it's not instantaneous. Mostly so that it can play the little sound whenever you get like 53 up moons in a row. A lot of things that happened all at once. Ah, crap. Do we have time for a donation? Please. The donation which swapped the sprite over to Marissa was from Big Mac Attack with a comment, Castlevania 2 bonus any percent run, let's go. Also, let's upset the sprite. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of really good sprites on uh, SMW Central, the website that people use to uh, hack resources for Super Mario World, Yoshi's Island, and to some extent Mario 64. I mean, this is one of them that's just available for anybody to grab and use in their hack. So, upcoming donations incentives. There, you can bid on Super Mario Maker 2 levels. You can plug your own level, you can plug a friend's level, or just a level that you like. And two targets in the future. Hyper Princess Pitch. In three hours. You can... We are... We, have, we are $380 away from more explosions. And then, in three and a half hours... We have a Castlevania 2 in target for 300 more dollars. You will get a bonus any percent run. So get the donations in, all for a good cause, the Trevor Project. Yeah, I looked at the sprite funny and I died. So we get to do this again. And someone's messing with the sprite, sprite clearing routine, which is not ideal. Um, for performance reasons, the game loads uh, routine into WRAM for a quick clearing of all the sprites, which in SMW, uh, at least on the SNES, means Moving them rapidly to the right side of the screen. Um, far off to the right side of the screen. In the wall? Okay, there we go. There we go. I don't know why that Dry Bones just suddenly doesn't care about me. Now we're in Morton's bloody castle. Decided to do a little redecorating inside. He's uh, He wants to do that sometimes. Oh, that's the other reason. So now we're doing uh, Sprite Poser. This is a invention of Squiggles. That uh, makes it so the coins uh, change what particular pose I use for the rest of the game until it gets unloaded or modified. If I change the number of coins, I'm now jumping forever. 
and so on and so forth. Wait, I got a double jump? Oh, cool, I can work with that. Yeah, one of the uh, cool things about this uh, is it sets up different kinds of challenges for levels you may not have normally done with, uh, I don't know, just anything. Trying to beat this level with uh, Leap is actually pretty challenging. Using double jumps in place of having any useful abilities is often kind of interesting as well. Or just constantly flying. It turns out that constantly having P-Speed and flying is really annoying at times. Um, and that makes the game really hard when you need to do precision jumping. There we go. And also, the game doesn't scroll until you uh, land somewhere. That's an important detail that's rarely covered. Alright, let's see if Morton's actually defeatable by uh, Marissa's disembodied head. Sometimes Mode 7 bosses do not like uh, how everything else in this game behaves. I wonder what that thing is. Is it a ninja? It must be a ninja. There we go. Speaking of always having flight. Because I don't always have flight. just felt like it. There we go! Martin was defeated. Tuberus got up to him. I'm right at the physics table now. That's interesting. Uh... Oh, there's... The bot's broken? Is the bot broken? Uh... How many modules do we have? Interesting. And uh, Marissa decided to go somewhere. The planet needed her. Well, that's weird. Didn't lower the number. Ask us up to four. All right, let me check that really quick. That's a thing I can check, because that's just a global in Carl. Uh, there's too many modules. Too many modules. Uh, press this button, so I actually get to save, hopefully. Uh, crap, where did I put max slots? I'm debugging also. Important detail. Uh, num slots equals eight. Um, slots equals eight. Um, no, easy way to fix this, probably. Restart the whole thing. Common solution in computer science. I'll have to look into that later. Oh. I'm nuts. <laughs> I thought it saved. It didn't save. Um, I'm certain I'll be at Morton's Castle in half a second. That usually is what happens when nothing important, uh, when I lose important save data. This castle is the only place I can get to easily, honestly. Everything else is a lot more challenging. There we go. Bam. LR Morton. We love our Morton salt here. Now I need to be very careful to never press LRR ever again. Right. I wanted to pause while I made the level purple. Or while the level made, got me purple. Ooh, the stairs look really good in that. Like, look at that. Those look nice. That looks nice. really nice. <laughs> sometimes you get really good palettes. Um, sometimes they're painful to look at. But this one, this one's good. I like this. You lose a little bit of the texture in the walls, but it still works. Um, and now it's kind of uh, Atari 2600 time. We have found the Mosaic Register, which is everyone's favorite register. On the Super Nintendo, there is a way to uh, sort of blur your texture, well, texture, your uh, your blocks. This is what this does, effectively. It kind of samples the uh, upper left-hand corner of the block and uh, smears it over the entirety of where it should be in uh, space. And oh no, it's it's starting to scroll me off the screen. Okay. No danger yet. This castle's a lot more roomy than you'd think. It definitely sprung for some serious space. And oh, I guess the didn't match up to where I thought it was. Yeah, Mosaic is fun, but after a while, it gets really uh, jarring to the eyes. Especially because the sprites don't get to be involved in it. But it really wasn't meant for this sort of thing, you know. It was mainly for level transitions, and when you have a character that gets hit in the head or something, and gets knocked out woozy-style, cartoonishly. I uh, don't know why that suddenly started playing, but I do feel like hurrying up. i got sort of a watermelon, like, interior watermelon motif. A little bit of rind on this. Pretty juicy watermelon. Shout outs to Earth Melon. His watermelon based stream. There's another fellow who's been in uh, 
working on you cool stuff to do with the uh, USB to SNES package. He has a different way of doing it than I do. Oh no, I'm out of time. Um, I can't get up this in 30 seconds, except maybe. No, no, no. So yeah, left right exit was on. So you might remember the top secret area from when you were a kid. Um, and you would walk back there every single time to get power-ups so you wouldn't lose your turn because your friend, uh, you're playing with a friend. That particular level has a particular flag set on it to make it so you uh, exit whenever you go to the left or right side of the screen. Well, you can turn that on on any level. And then anytime you touch the left or right side of the screen, you exit the level. Ooh, this is snazzy. I'm ruining it. There were two. I thought that was a mirror. Uh, this, if you wanted to have a sewer level, I guess, that looks like some cool sludge, like right there. Look at that. Magic Koopas can't spawn in layer two uh, spots. I guess they can. I thought they couldn't. Okay. Um, you can also destroy the level whenever they feel like it. It's best to get rid of them on site if you can. You don't want to have a Magic Koopa infestation. Usually if there's one, there's more than one. There's already three. That one quite exist. Never know. Never really know. There we go. Oh. oh, I can fix this. I can fix this. I couldn't fix this. Fell through the floor. It happens. That looked really close to being fixed. I almost landed on the right uh, square. It's really hard to control with the, uh, the A warp. Um, it happens more often than you think, where I just happen to get clipped out of the stairs, because you lose one sprite here when you're going up it. It just wants to drop you in, into the void. One block there. Bob Barker helping you control the minion population. Spare or neuter your magic koopas. It's true. You can get out of control really fast. There we go. Uh, wait, no, 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 no. no. Um, there we go. Oh, wait. Only the level ended. I might still die. That was the hole I was trying to get out of. When the level ends, you don't have any uh, latitude in doing anything, and so if there happens to be death in front of you in the form of a pit or a lava or something else that's sort of an instant death like crush, you just kind of die. Um, and those are known as... Kaizo traps. Oh god. Alright, balloon time. The balloon register doesn't work quite as well as you'd hope. Because you actually are holding a balloon while you're a balloon, if that makes any sense. Um, and so just having just sending the balloon register basically results in me being a balloon and standing around and doing nothing. I have a short drink though. That's what I get for explaining things first. The macro that works somewhere. Yeah, um, who came up with that? I want to say uh, Noah did. Ixathiddle. It, 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 His name is really hard to pronounce on uh, Twitch, but you usually just call him Noah. <laughs> that works. Um, and I think Snyder also figured it out. A couple of regulars in the chat, like Snyder, uh, have done some very extensive things in this. Let's hope that saved. Last time I did this for a non-trivial audience, I was doing the uh, Hack Attack Marathon, and uh, this was the level we got stuck on for a couple hours. Or, well, like an hour, almost. Had a cape. Eh, must have gone away. You can't get attached to any amount of progress or anything in this particular uh, type of play, because it rapidly disappears. Like the level. Um is the best play here going for it oh my star ran out at just the right time i think that's often star going off <laughs> actually working sounds less exciting it's true what is that uh, dwarf fortress saying uh, losing is fun this it's more like crashing is fun uh, i see what's going on here i'm in that weird like triple power-up state this is gonna make things complicated oh no, no. oh i guess i still have this 
one of the problems is you can never really tell what's going on with the level in front of you. And the Red Switch Palace is on, which I wasn't expecting. No! Um, that wasn't a smart move. Uh, I got this. Oh, no, no, I don't got this. Oh, I don't got this. Spread into a corner. It happens. Not sure why Marissa is jumping at the beginning of levels anymore. It's a new one to me. Okay. Down, right. Okay, now here's where the real platform is. The game doesn't really like to reload things uh, if it doesn't have to, and so if it thinks it's already loaded it, it doesn't bother reloading stuff, which is a really good optimization. If you think you've loaded something, you've loaded it, really. Usually this kind of thing doesn't happen. All right. You know, secret one. We're going to uh, speed up our process here a little bit. Oh, no. Oh, dang it, the A thing isn't on anymore. Well, we can't speed up our process anymore. She is floatier than usual. Makes sense. Marissa's a witch. Witches do float. Still. I realize the physics tables were in uh, RAM. This stuff in the ROM is hard to uh, manipulate just because of... <laughs> it was a short-lived power-up, but enjoyable. Uh, because of how the uh, address mappings work. Uh, and also because I banned writing to them. Because you'd do it... Well, because of how the mapping works out, you probably would not get it right and result in just either writing to No Man's Land or crashing the game. And honestly, I don't need to get help you guys crash the game. Review table's definitely in the ROM, but you have your ways. Of course, TJB has his ways. So that makes sense. TJB loves mid-airs, and he has made his own fancy new hack. It's all about doing mid-air shell tricks. Which has required some, a certain amount of ASM. So he certainly is versed in this kind of thing now. All right. Where am I? And why did I just spin jump? Is motor skills on? You can change that midair. I mean, I guess you must be able to. That's how motor skills does it. Motor skills is a fairly popular uh, Kaizo ASM that allows you to change what kind of jump you're doing while in midair. So you can start with a... Uh, Spin jump and transition to a normal jump, or vice versa. And it's often used to make you do crazy Kaizo levels that are very difficult. Not all very difficult, but most of them are. Okay. I hope this is encoding well, because it certainly looks awful on my screen. Flytech. The beautiful thing about Mario, if you just uh, slide, you can hold on to a lot of your momentum if you're careful about how you jump. Or just let go of the D-pad and jump carefully. All right. And level's over. have no cape. Amazing how often these boxes contain things that are not cape. Now I jump very short. Fascinating. Oh. Do you usually kill pufferfish like that? Okay. Uh, I don't know if... I <laughs> okay. Um, this is not usually how you play this level, but alright. I'm just gonna take the expressway. Oh, no, come on, no, dolphin, no, the other way. That was so cool while it was working. This might also be a record for longest time between level zero. Typically when things go wrong in this game, it sends you to the bonus game, which is unwinnable. I'm like not really spinning. Something really weird is going on. I, I think I hit the Switch Palace. Not much of a yump, though. This is absolutely wonderful. Oh, thanks. And you said that you were the one who made this? Yeah, everything here, except for a very small amount of the uh, the tracker to the right, uh, was written entirely by me. Um, of course, I can't take credit for all the Python packages I've used, or uh, the firmware, which was written by Red Guy uh, for the SD to SNES. 
Um, and the HTML to the to the right, uh, I attribute like a very small amount to uh, Pidge One Zero because I stole some of that HTML from her Mario RPG rando tracker. That's how you do HTML. You steal HTML from somewhere else and then you rewrite it to your needs. It's absolutely amazing. One of the best things we've ever seen. Thanks. That definitely uh, fits you guys' uh, your guys's modus operandi of uh, exploring strange areas of games. Because uh, there's nothing stranger than, than this kind of area, which wasn't meant to be here to begin with. Uh, I think this is going to be a very hard level. A lot of ice cubes. Water. This level was already an interesting water level. Now it's full of ice cubes. Uh, can I just swim over it? No. The inconvenient time to turn that off. Once the collision data is loaded, um, then I'm kind of stuck. Now a good time to read a blurb? Go for it. Welcome to Undefined Behavior, a showcase and speedrunning marathon centered around queering games and queerness in games. For this marathon, we're exploring glitchy, unusual, and marathon unsafe runs, as well as adjacent and related queer game con gaming content. We queer games when we reject limits and rules, and when we play in atypical ways, and when we read diversity into stories and themes. This is the very first Undefined Behavior Marathon, and we're so excited to share all these games and showcases with you. And it has been a wonderful time so far, and we hope that all of you are having as good of a time as we are. And that was all the all donations from here go to the Trevor Project, a wonderful crisis hotline for LGBT youth. And right now, we have opened a sprite bid war for for this hack these chat hacks, and um, right now, Mallow the Cat is $9 behind, Dr. Yoshi is $20 behind, and if you, and if your sprite becomes, and if you donate for the sprite, it will instantly change. And coming up, we have Super Mario Maker 2 levels, where you can bid to have your level played on stream, or your friend's level, or any level you just like. All right. Oh, we beat the level, kind of, um, but we may have lost the, definitely lost the war there. Um, typically, when you beat a level with a incorrect exit, it breaks the overworld, as it, you can see there. Usually, it breaks it more. Obviously, what is even going on? I don't think I can. Oh, wait a second. Hold up. Am I player two? I get for grabbing the not grabbing the other controller. Nope. Hmm. Look at the upper right hand corner. Say Marissa. <laughs> Great, it gets a good point. I can't actually tell because of what I did. Yeah, well, here we go. Try with two controllers. And this is clearly the uh, the correct controller, the first player controller. We've got two controllers here that I can tell apart by feel because one's a Super Famicom and one's a Super Nintendo. Yeah, I guess I'm just like stuck in something to start with. Or, oh, I see what's going on. There's uh, there's some weirdness here. You can trust sprites. Only I could go in that door. So cool, but it would be destroyed by the uh, mushroom platform moving up and down. The mushroom platform does destroy any background blocks that it goes through. A lot of weird tech in this game. Like, look at this. I uh, guess we might not be able to see it. There we go, see? Got rid of the, the little berry there. Yoshi will be disappointed, but uh, he'll live. Got plenty of eggs in the meantime. I love the, like, graffiti right there. The graffiti of uh, mines. I don't think there are any lines in this level. Halfway point. This is what it looks like when you... Okay, this is what it looks like when fireworks go off, and now you can't see your sprite. <laughs> uh, and now scrolling is off. All right, I'm just ballooning my way through it. Every time they end the level, I guess. a cape in the item box? I can't even tell. It's almost impossible to tell. Uh, yep, we broke it. All right, time to go the other way. It happens a lot. It used to happen a lot, then someone found a way to fix it. But either way, you know, good to see some other levels. Ooh, I like this one. It's very green. It's still recognizable as the level itself somehow. That usually doesn't happen with this ASM. Oh, I went in a pipe. Is that a bad thing? 
And here we are in level... Zero? I keep spawning switch palaces. How does that even work? I've never seen that one before. <laughs> now, breaking the overworld happens a lot. Um... Just because of how Mario work, how this game works, is it takes the level number and then indexes that into it, adds on, adds what exit type you beat it with, um, and indexes that into a table. Um, and so some uh, sometimes that will take you to interesting places which you're not supposed to be, or activate edges that aren't supposed to be done yet. Um, so things can get a little weird there, and sometimes you end up. Why is there a platform there? Are these still here? I just can't see them. Nope. There we go. Overworld by Sweet Dude. Yeah, we can't do that right now. Sweet Dude makes really good overworlds, though. Never played... Uh, if you've ever played Hacks, he's, he's also written some really fun hacks. Created. Oh, dang it. Why do I keep entering those pipes? Probably because I can't see them as pipes. Where did this platform come from? Like, just where did it come from? There's not usually a platform here. I guess this room is also subject to that weird ASM. It's just not loading the tiles, because there's probably no reasonable tiles to load. And so the level is corrupted itself. Interesting. Still got weird physics. All right. There we go. We got one. These don't behave normally, and I don't know why. And, of course, the level doesn't actually end until someone lets me out. A common problem. Yeah. Cool. Try Vanilla Dome 2 again. Yeah, this is uh this particular pipe trick is kind of mean. Uh but I've actually I have actually well that wasn't a floor. I have seen it used in other hacks uh, as an obstacle. And crack the hack. There was a section where you had to be very careful to not enter any of the pipes. They just drop you off at death, you know, casually. Okay. Oh, that was that was a solid wall. It's just been absolutely amazing, and in our brain, we're just going through wanting to get this working for Super Metroid. Yeah, I've tried it with a few other uh, games. Um, so, like the module loading system works with other stuff. I've been testing uh, other things with it. Uh, but uh, nothing, nothing. Oh, so that's what that was. Um, nothing in concrete so far, but I've tried like the basic version uh, way back in the day. We tried it on Donkey Kong Country 2, and it was pretty much just crashing the entire time. Uh, Super Mega, uh, we tried on Mega Man X as well, and Mega Man X has some copy protection stuff that I think was breaking, but I'd, but I'd need to check. Um, so far, really, the only game this has worked on is Super Mario World, and none of the other games are quite as well documented, but Super Metroid might be. Because it's got like a, a solid randomizer. Super Metroid randomizer is incredibly well example. documented. We've spent a good amount of time staring at the RAM map documentation for that. For Super Metroid? Yes. Cool. Could you link me to that sometime? I love yes, seeing we can. RAM maps. Um, and Data Crystal rarely has them. I know there's some level in here somewhere. I'm going to find it kind of see that there's a repeating pattern here. I guess I never noticed that before. It's sort of on the diagonal bias. Got like a crossword style symmetry. Um, I think there might not be enough level here to, for me to do anything anymore, is there? Um, let's see. What can I do? Uh, too big to go through any of the doors. This would be a good place to go through a door if I could, I think think about what this actually looks like outside of this level. Yeah. I think I try a pipe. Pipes and doors work the same way, so if I enter, could enter one... Eh, this might work. Nope. Hmm. see an end post in there, but it's being eaten by some Linux. Yep. Oh, I still do love the virus email sent by, uh, was it, grandmas and offshore casinos. Okay, so 
So the problem isn't the goalpost. The problem is finding something to uh, to do with the goalpost, right? Like all the goalposts exist, but they don't have a goal tape, which is a sprite. In this uh, particular ghost house, I'm pretty sure you leave it by entering a pipe. So if you could find a pipe or a door that's in the right segment, I can get on top of, which I don't think I can. Oh, cool, I'm on a fence. That might work. Make an entire puzzle hack based upon the try to complete the level by standing in some place and not dying. I don't think anyone's done that. There's not a lot of puzzle hacks out there. I see what you did there. This level in particular is going to let me just kind of waltz through it. Until I enter a pipe. Until I enter a pipe. Um, so yeah, this also works with pretty much any hack I've thrown at it. So I've tried playing uh, games or hacks such as uh, Jump. Uh, I think I tried Jump in a half at some point. Um, it works on smaller hacks. We did this on Rob Father once to see what uh, trying to play Kaizo would look like with uh, this enabled. And it was basically, I got sent to Morton's Castle 2 a lot, or number two Morton's Castle a lot, but it was still kind of fun. Um, and, okay. Uh, can I stand on this? Oh, yeah, I can stand on this. This is a sprite platform. Let's see what happens to the sprite platform. Apparently that's a, uh, a wall of some sort. Okay. This time, it'll probably be the same, but weirder. Okay, so there's some water there. I think with Cape, you can actually do this a lot. Oh, okay. All right, well, I like this level. I think I like this level, at least. Not sure what level this is which of the possible levels this is, but there's either Cookie Bridge or the first level, but it honestly doesn't matter. Cookie Bridge. Interesting, this is already repeating really fast. This is exactly, this is pretty much the same pattern we got in the uh, the ghost house. I need, I need my feather, I need my feather for this, oh crap. So if I have fences, this also works, if I can grab onto a fence. I need a way to reset my Y velocity before it gets too high or low, whatever direction it is. I forget if it's negative to go. I think it's negative to go up. I think the origin of this system, of the system of coordinates is zero, zero is the upper left-hand corner of the level, I think. I don't know I've messed with it, though. Never mind. Didn't work. I don't, I don't, I think there's one SM that likes to make just completely corrupt the level table. Um, it used to only affect the first couple screens, and now it seems to affect everything. And we got fast spread. I'll live with that. Marissa is a balloon. Weird looking balloon, to be fair. Usually you don't stand like this when you're a balloon, but I kind of like it, actually. If she was physically holding some sort of, like, balloon... Uh, like, you know, with on a string and stuff, it would look pretty good. All right. Crap, 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 crap. Keep forgetting I'm just going to fall through this level the moment I touch it. Hmm. Is this supposed to be a broom? I don't think so. I don't, I don't remember seeing any brooms in her sprite sheet. But that's definitely also a pretty good way to pretend here that she's got a, a broomstick, just an invisible one. She's a witch. It makes sense. Something that hurts me there that I just... Oh, there's a one of those, the Halloween things. Halloween jack-o'-lantern. Uh... Wait, I want that star. There we go. We were talking. Now we're not. Okay. Uh... The level change suddenly? Hmm... I think that's lava. I don't think I want to touch the lava. This is sort of what uh, speedruns of one of those, um, what was it? One of like the Wario, Mario Land 2 or something. Basically, you end up walking out through memory. I guess Mario 3 as well. Mario 3's uh, any percent also looks a bit like this, where you kind of wander your way out into memory. Then yeah, this looks exactly something. like the Mario Land 2 speedrun. Glitch run. <laughs> it just has more colors. Oh, cool. Capes. Okay. 
How much more level is there? I just want to get to the end. I want to see it. What's there? Hopefully accidentally hit the goalpost. It might still end up killing me. Wait, now is the goalpost in this level? Wait a second. This is almost a normal level again, isn't it? It was almost a normal level. A few seconds. It's just filled with, uh... Okay, that's the goalpost. I think I legitly collected that. Oh, never mind. <laughs> is this a Team Dicks hack? Do you know why, you know why, starts, you know why the level starts repeating so much? Um, I assume they're using the like they're using the um, RNG that the game has built into it, and it's not great RNG. It's pretty good RNG, um, but it. Uh, any pseudo-random number generator is eventually going to start repeating itself. You'll end up seeing that sort of pattern of repeating lines if you do, uh, like, graph it out that way. Um, there's a few ways to actually deal with that, uh, and one of the best ways is to actually interpolate two different pseudo-random number generators. So the Super Nintendo can't produce real random numbers for the most part, aside from, like, using inputs as an entropy source or using um, Open bus behavior, which is generally a bad idea, but you can do it. it it's a it's a workable solution. Um, and so any pseudo random number generator is eventually, without extra seeding, eventually going to end up converging in a way like this. Um, if if it's well made to some extent, um, is it your local library to learn more about pseudo random number generators? Um, I do not actually remember the type that are used by uh, this. The one I know best, I believe, is the linear congruential congruential. Uh, the Pac-Man uses, just because it's really simple. Just multiply a number, the uh, seed by a number, and add a constant, and then uh, truncate the number by doing a division and throwing away the uh, result. You keep the remainder. On the end. Wait, no, I didn't... Oh, hey, perfect! I wedged myself. That was completely on accident. This is amazing that you have this much experience to be able to navigate these glitchy levels and have a feel for where the end is going to be. Um, I mean, part of it's just like vanilla experience. You've played vanilla levels enough, you kind of can know where things are. Um, the other thing that helps is that I can warp to the right. If you go far enough to the right in these levels, you tend to end up at the end. Um, that's about it. After all, Mario is a game of walking slowly or quickly to the right and jumping. Uh, pretty much all levels can be described in that way that aren't uh, tricky like this one. So this one being a very tricky level, you cannot merely do that. You have to also go down. Okay. This level does not seem to have a lot in the way of fences yet. Yeah, there's some fences. Right. Um, so if we got about 10 minutes, what we should probably do is try to fight us a Bowser. Um, Let's see if Snyder can can do that, and we'll set admin only after like a minute or two of Bowser fighting. Because Bowser fights are fun, but can often be possible. Um, just because there's so many different things you can do in a Bowser fight to make it completely unwinnable. Funny, but unwinnable. Close. We're on the right sub-map. Go to Lemmy three, number three Lemmy's Castle just to see what's up with that. Again, games often don't update state when they don't feel the need to, and they just don't expect people to change the names of levels out from underneath them. Is now a good time to plug a donation incentive? Please. So, as we're finishing this one up, the next run is going to be Super Mario Maker levels. And for and you can for as little as a dollar now, you can get your level played on stream. So get your donations in for that. Mario Maker levels. Okay. Mario Maker is a fun game to watch. I'm looking forward to that as well. In fact, this entire block's got a lot of cool stuff in it. Um, level zero. Uh, resetting the game. Um, I'm going to reset the game. What I'm going to do is actually reset the whole console so we can actually clear all of the stuff just to be sure. Um, that'll work a little bit better. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get our way back to Bowser very quickly. 
Uh, though we are. There we go. There's some random lag. Oh, God. This is definitely one of the simpler but weirder ones that people have done stuff with. And we're back in here. Something's going to drop on my head shortly. I can feel it. And there's a fence up here now. There's always been a fence up here? I just missed that that was there sometime. Oh, wait, no. I've got climb on air turned on. There's a variable that just says you are currently on a fence. And if you ever press up or down, you end up immediately on stuff like a poor dolphin or something. Trapped in the net. Or in this case, the castle wall. Okay, maybe not so poor dolphin. Oh, crap. That's a lot of footballs. Just gotta get to the halfway point. Oh, there we go. Is there a way to change the Bowser sprite? There must be some Bowser sprite that's appropriate for Marissa. <laughs> there probably is. Unfortunately, that is not within my domain right now. Um, changing it actually requires doing a bit of work. Um, because the bow browser isn't really a sprite, per se. Well, he kind of is. He's, he's half sprite, half background. Um, he is a very weird thing. Um, and also easy to break, as you might notice. Now Bowser's kind of stuck. He doesn't, doesn't know what to do. Um, but the way that Bowser's implemented, he is a Mode 7 background. You may have heard of Mode 7 from games such as Super Mario Kart. Uh, or from intro, or from things like Chrono Trigger. Um, and that is the one mode where you can do arbitrary rotations of... Uh, of backgrounds and other transformations. You're given an affine matrix, which allows for a few different kinds of transformations, but not all of the fancy 3D stuff you might expect. The console makes sense. Okay, cool. Didn't crash. It takes a second to warm up. So I do lose the halfway point because the level's reloading repeatedly. Um, so they use that to do all of the transformations that Bowser does, like his Team Rocket's flying off again while spinning away pose is implemented that way uh, as a set of uh, transformation matrices, but small ones. With random lag, I gotta be really careful because it likes to eat my inputs. There we go. Oh. This is the, uh, the red level. All right. Think that that's dead. Yeah, usually when sound goes, that's usually when it's dead. At least I can't see anything or do anything. In the interest of time, because I don't want to run too far over or over at all. It's an admin only, unfortunately. Which makes it so only admins can do things. Or pseudo-admins in this case. If I can get moved back to Bowser's Castle. Which will take a minute. Always takes a minute. And uh, jump around to the ghost house for a minute while we enjoy Mario A because I keep forgetting to reset the script. Ooh, the whole thing crashed. Uh, that's not good. Uh, nuts. Okay. Um, hmm. Wiggles, don't do that. Okay. Really quick, I can fix this. Uh, maybe I can. Uh, don't try to load modules during admin only, please. Because it will crash the game. Try that again. Back on. Yeah, uh, Snyder is in charge of the Bowser because he's good at make. Well, he makes Bowsers. <laughs> Uh, sometimes they're good, sometimes they are not. There's one particular one that I'm not a huge fan of where Bowser uh, throws flying Koop or jumping Koopas. But because of weirdness going on with the Bowser fight, the uh, jumping Koopas never... Uh, when you hit them, they leave a gigantic hurt box, like the size of an urchin. It's really weird. So, I know, you're not a pseudo-admin SMW agent, unfortunately. That's a small group. I just want to make sure that we can actually complete on time. Uh, 
I am definitely going to have to fix that. I haven't had to turn on admin only mode in a while, and it looks like it does not play well with the, uh, the module loader. That working, Fistbit? That was smart. Ah, yeah. I see what happened here. All right. It works. Bowser, come on, give me some ammunition. What you're seeing there is a big boo. Also known in Japan as Atomic Teresa for some reason. Not really sure what the origin of that name is, but it's definitely an interesting one. Um, and it plays kind of nicely with Bowser, except it's mostly composed of peach sprites and the word thank you. And of course, it doesn't have a hitbox because it never did. Hit it once. Hit it twice, and... That. Killing the boo Thought on you to fight. All you need to do is kill the boo. You never need to kill Bowser. Just the boo. Um, and if we let the credits play, I've got a couple... I've got an interesting thing near the end. Um, so yeah, that was uh, Chat Hacks SMW, as won by Marissa. The close thing, Malo the Cat and uh, Dr. Yoshi could have been in there. Could have been contenders, but they were not, unfortunately. Thank you Actually, so much for this change. amazing run. It was a lot of fun. I love showing this off. Uh, it's, uh, it's definitely a weird thing. Uh, lots of fun. People get to learn some cool assembly stuff and get to learn sort of how... Super Mario World works. Like, it's a very... It's complicated, but it's not that complicated. It's easy enough to sit down with the list and understand what to do. And there's stuff in there for people who really, you know, don't really know a whole lot of programming or anything just to mess with. People named addresses like uh, VX and VY that just shove you around are a lot of fun to play with regardless. Um, and you don't really need to know a lot to be able to just send someone flying in the sky. So. Um, he's Okato. Here what was up. Dave Brooks is the fellow who named all of the uh, English Koopas and whatnot. So all the Koopa kids are names that he came up with because he really likes music. Um, I learned that uh, Resnor is named after Trent Resnor of Nine Inch Nails the other day. So, because of course it is. Hopefully this is not going to take us to uh, Morton's Castle. It's done that in the past. Never really trust these Yoshis look happy, but they could be doing anything. Yoshis are quite mischievous. They're very mischievous. They're very interesting critters. Short lived though. They tend to fall in pits. <laughs> Alright. So here we go. Got uh, Zovermillion up there. So basically, I've also replaced the credit names with anyone who's come by and uh, typed stuff in chat. Glitch Witch, Frozen Flygon, Wolfman 2000, Verify, Mr. Mayhem Chuck, and TGB Lotus. I don't know why those guys always end up as Chuck and Lotus. I should probably look into my random number generation. DJ John Ketchup, uh, Kes Kitsune. He can't see it, but we have a massive grin right now. This is amazing. Uh, Rubash, an illustrious. Eastris. Where there's an L in that name. If I'm wrong. Uh, Bestie, numbers, cloudy one, Sny J, one of my uh, regulars and pseudo admins for this stream. Um, Arborella, Speedy Cat Bot, Night Bot. This is the bot page. Sorry, Arborella, you're a bot now. Arborella. Um, SMW Agent 09AF. Made work hero and Ellen Verd. World. I've heard. Sorry if I butcher anyone's names. I've tried to read these really fast. Circle Friendo. Uh, Livia First. Furry, f furry Full Fawful. Name with the most Fs. I'm a. I'm just some Eeries. Amelia San. Glitch Cat 07. A Fisk Bit. And MX Cook. Man. And 
Empty Eye. These are a lot easier to read now. But there are actually numbers in this uh, font set a while ago. Trent made everything way better. Reznor, Trent Reznor came by for a little bit. Didn't really say much, though. How did I do this? A lot of staring at code. Hubert, 555. We got uh, JD Bryden, Shubda, uh, and of course all of the other Koopa's kids. Shubda's a uh, Shubda Koopa today. That is, as it says, the end. So thank you for letting me show you all this. Thank you so much. This is absolutely wonderful. Oh, you're welcome. I say it's always a pleasure. Anyway, I think I'll need to sign out so the next people can get ready. Thank you so much. And up next, we have Mad Ewokard, a Super Mario Maker le two levels from based on donations. So get the do those donations in for levels. Right now, for as little as one dollar, you can get your level played on stream, or your friend's level, or a level that you just enjoy. And Mad Ewokard is going to be playing whatever you whatever you would like. So get those donations in for this.